Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener today, Holly's going to be remote. We'll tell you more about that, mm -hmm. as well as we'll discuss many vegetables in which you can grow in partial shade and ways not to burn yourself out during the growing season. Our guest will be Mary Schleier. She is an author from Northern Gardener. From apples to zinnias, she will be with us as well as your garden questions and our garden answers. All of that starts right now. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5. Wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening, whether on those particular stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, or anywhere in between, we are live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So happy that you've joined us on this Saturday morning. I am your host, Joy Barrett. Beside me is not... Uh, nobody today, but across town and in a hospital room is my wife, co-host, and best friend. Holly Baird. Uh, are you okay? We'll, yeah, we can hear you just fine. We'll get to That's why good. she's uh, via phone and in the hospital. She's okay in a moment. But there's a number of ways in which you can contact us. Uh, you can do that via the email address at twvgshow at gmail.com. You can also do that at uh, T uh, TWVG show on Twitter or hashtag TWVG, and we'll give the call-in information in just a moment. Holly, explain to uh, the listeners why uh, you're there and not here. So um, on early Wednesday morning, I was having, so like middle of the night, I was having a hard time breathing. I had been having, getting really winded and things like that earlier in the week, and so I woke up in the night, was having a hard time breathing, decided to go to the hospital, um, it's an emergency room. It turns out I had a pulmonary embolism, which is basically a blood clot in my lungs, and it was caused by my birth control. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you use birth control. There are some risk factors. So at this point, I feel fine. I'm doing well. They're just trying to get my medication adjusted to a therapeutic level. And uh, yeah, have to wait. everything will be fine. But, yeah, I have a, a friend who went through this, and once I noticed the symptoms that Holly was having, I started to send some messages, and the symptoms were the same. And then, uh, which if you remember late uh, Tuesday morning, it was not the most pleasant uh, driving conditions, but it didn't matter. So we got her there, and uh, they, they admitted her, and she should be coming home in the next couple of days. But uh, it's a good public service announcement to, to make aware that, if you if something doesn't seem right, you need to address it because you could have just went back to sleep and said, well, I'll just deal with it in the morning, and maybe you would or maybe you wouldn't have. Exactly. Definitely need to listen to your body. So if you have a question, Holly's going to do the first half of the show uh, via phone. Now, it's not – I didn't say you have to be on the phone. You have to be part of the show. I can do the show myself. That's not a problem. She chose to be uh, – she asked to be part of the program via the uh, phone, so uh, that's not something I asked her to do. She volunteered on that. If you want to contact us, you can do that through the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline at 414-444-5250. IV Organics is a 3-in-1 plant guard that naturally protects your plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects newly installed plants, trees, shields, pruned, and damaged surfaces for your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic and environmentally safe and organic. To find out more, go to IVorganics.com. It also is easy to apply. Well, we had a number of talks this week uh, because of the uh, situation. I did two by myself. Holly did two with me. We want to welcome those who are listening from Germantown on Monday, uh, Brookfield on Tuesday, Wabatosa Courthouse on Tuesday as Waukesha. well. Wa Wa yeah, Waukesha. Uh, Wa yeah, there you go. Uh, and then North Shore Community Library or Public Library on Wednesday. And if you miss those and you want to be part of our garden talks, uh, we've got two coming up this week, April 10th, Tuesday. Uh, Growing the Best Tomatoes will be in West Allis from 7 to 8 p.m. at the Public Library there. Or Thursday at New Berlin, where we're going to talk about way, 10 ways to maximize your garden regardless of the size that you have. So you can always join us. If you find, want to find out where we will be, where you might be, you can go to the website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Come and See Us tab, and that lists all of our talks for the year. And also, if you would like us to talk at your garden group, club, health uh, group, uh, health and wellness, whatever it is, you can certainly send us an email, uh, twvgshow at gmail.com. 
Well, Holly, we're going to talk about a number of ways. Well, before I get to that, I want to recognize and thank CBS 58 for rerunning our uh, little video about us uh, last Sunday morning. It was a seven-minute segment that they had recorded last year, and they reran it in recognition of Season 2 here of the program uh, on WNOV and 860, uh, 860 AM and FM 106.5 here in the Milwaukee area, as well as uh, Milwaukee Magazine. The article on us is out. And, Holly, you got a message from somebody who wasn't even in Wisconsin that saw it. Yeah, she was traveling, and she was in the Minneapolis airport, and she was, you know, looking at magazines, and all of a sudden, there I am. It was my coworker, and all of a sudden, there I am. And uh, so she sent me a picture of it, and the, you know, it was nice that she shared that. So, yeah, um, we're looking forward to uh, to seeing that. And uh, interesting that uh, it takes somebody from Minnesota. It's in Minnesota, so it is on newsstands here in the Milwaukee area. Well, Holly, let's talk about uh, the topic for the day here, which is. A number of vegetables that you can grow in partial shade that you maybe didn't think you could grow. Now, there is over 40-plus vegetables that you can grow in partial shade. Now, we are not all fortunate enough to have the availability of an open field 12, 14 hours a day. Uh, we are a lot of places in urban settings or have trees that shade parts of our garden. Uh, so partial shade, I want to define that. That meaning an adequate amount of sunlight for four to six hours a day. That's the kind of, that's the window of safeness there. Anything mm-hmm. less than that really is not going to do anything. Any more than that, then your opportunities open up to the other vegetables. Now, Holly, you have a saying in regards to what grows when and how it grows with the roots and the greens. How does that work? Yeah, so if, it, if you grow it for the roots or the fruits, you need full sun. If you grow it for the the leaves or the greens, you need you can it can have partial shade and that falls in the line of some of these that that's a, mm-hmm. about 99 percent accurate on that for most things so uh one of the the ones that are it's a perennial but one yeah yeah go ahead but one thing you want to keep in mind is that even if you grow these in partial shade and they normally need typically want full sun you're just going to probably have less of a of a harvest or smaller fruit smaller vegetables Right. Uh, right. As, yeah. Asparagus is one, of, is one on the top of the list, which asparagus is a great early spring uh, vegetable, or I guess it's a fern of some sort there. But it can grow, once you get it established after two years, you can start harvesting the third year, and it will grow for 30 to 50 years in the one spot. It continues to come back year after year. The only thing I think when I see that, and that was one of the the vegetables that we compiled, is if you're going to have it for 30 or 50 years, you want to put it in a spot where you're going to have full sun because you want the most production out of that three-week period that it it produces during the year. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, definitely you want to keep that um, in mind. Uh, Beets Um, beets is another one. Yeah, beets, we've grown them in partial shade, and obviously we know the difference. I've noticed a difference when they're in full sun versus partial sh- partial shade. I, um, broccoli or bok choy, right? Um, so that's a that's kind of a green. It's like a cabbage. Um, it's like a Chinese cabbage. Um, and then broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, all those are in the same family along with cauliflower. Horseradish the, is a perennial that grows in partial shade. So if you have the side of the house, uh, you can throw that in there, and that will grow for years. Uh, right, and then like any type of greens, like the mustard greens, uh, mizuna, lettuce, um, spinach, all those Swiss, Swiss chard. Swiss chard is nice because you can get, you can put that with your as like an edible landscaping, foodscaping. So you can put that in that, yeah, like a foodscape. So you can put that in your house, maybe like in a garden bed, and it's still an edible, but. It looks nice and leafy and pretty. In places where you're not supposed to grow stuff in the front yard, you can mix that in with your uh, flowers beds there, and it'll work just fine. Uh, yes. uh, radishes can grow in partial shade. Now, again, radishes are 30-day maximum, in most cases, uh, root crop. So even in the early spring, when there's no real leaves on the plant on the trees, you can get that to grow without really any problem at all. 30 days, 18 mm-hmm. to 30 days is what that takes. Right. Yeah, so um, radishes, and then rhubarb, that's a perennial. And and we yeah. grow that in partial shade in containers. In containers, yeah. This so is the third year. There's ways you can, you know, d- do different things to get the results you want. And then uh, rutabaga, 
is another root crop that um, you can grow in partial shade. And we find the most successful rutabaga in, uh, to grow is in the fall. We usually plant it about the first week in August. It takes 90 days to reach a mature state. Uh, so that's where that that's, we find that. Do we try to grow in the spring? It just doesn't work. It likes those cool nights and not the nights where it continues to get warmer and warmer on that. Right. Uh, peas, that's an easy one to grow in partial shade. And then I want to note, because peas, they, since they're a spring crop, the reason why they're a spring crop is because they don't do well once we get into longer days. It's not because of the heat of the day. They sensitive. It's because they're longer. Or light they, sensitive. They sensitive, yeah. light sensitive. So if you grow in partial shade, you might get a longer harvest. Well, and that's the thing with the leafy greens, the lettuces, uh, the spinach. You're mimicking the days being not as long because you're tricking it by putting it in that partial shade. So it's, if the day is like, let's pick a number, 11 hours long, and you have partial shade for three hours, that plant is really thinking that it's about nine hours of sunlight, you know, that type of thing. So you're mimicking that. Uh, garlic can be grown in partial shade. Uh, we planted some spring garlic. That will be up on the website this weekend. Uh, we just did a few bulbs because it needs cold cycles in order to develop and split the, into cloves. Um, so we did a small number. We do about, and, and this is no exaggeration, about 120 uh, bulbs of garlic we harvest each spring. And it's a phenomenal crop, easy crop to grow. You call it, Holly, stupid e- easy to grow. <laughs> I do. It is stupid easy to grow. People are so impressed by it. When you, you, know, you bring them a head of garlic, I grew this. Wow, that's so cool. And you're like, yeah, I don't know, you just put it in the ground and it does its thing. But we had to learn that. We had to learn how to grow it correctly because we were, I think we were trying too hard. Uh, we, yeah, we, we made a number of mistakes, and uh, we got a hold of the guy in St. Louis. He's called the garlic guy uh, because he grows between twenty and 25,000 bulbs of garlic for the St. Louis Garlic Festival each year. And we said, hey, here's what we're doing. Can you help us? And he said, well, here's what you're doing wrong. Um, so we followed his recommendations and have had phenomenal garlic ever since. And you can go to the WisconsinVegetableGarden.com and just search Growing Great Garlic or Garlic. And it'll, we've got a number of videos in which instructs you very uh, very easily how to do that. But it's best that we always plant it the second Tuesday in October each year regardless of the condition. So that that's always uh, something we look forward to doing. And it's really fun. I think it's fun to harvest too. And, and the hard neck, you get the scapes, which is a luxury or a delicacy uh, with that you do not get with the soft neck garlic. Right. And, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, another one is carrots. Carrots being, can be grown in partial shade. We, we uh, used to try to grow carrots in the ground. Just, just failed at it miserably. And, and we've got in the root maker containers, the grow bags and the raised beds, and we're never going to go back to contain our carrots in the ground again because we grow it in that loose, uh, medium, that potting mix or that compost in the containers, and we're getting 8, 12, 14 inch carrots of all colors of the rainbow because we plant a variety of, of carrots, and it, it's worked. We're never going to go back to ground garden carrots. Right. We had some awesome carrots, so definitely make sure if, you, if you're if you not doing a raised bed, make sure your soil is just super nice and loose and um, you have a nice mold. Um, Aleeks can be grown in partial shade if you're going to pick some of those up. It's too late now to start them from seed, so if you go to Blue Mills or your, your garden center, wherever you may be at located in the country, uh, leeks can be grown, and, and it's not a category like onions, short, middle, or short, neutral, and long day. Leeks will grow no matter where you're at in, in the world. So, uh, And they're easy to grow. You don't have to worry about bulbing or anything. They grow. Uh, we've had phenomenal success with leeks, uh, bigger than broom handles. Uh, it really has worked well for us on that. Yep, so those are um, some things that you can grow in the partial shade. Um, and then I think you mentioned here that um, you want to make sure you water. Of course, yeah, watering properly. it. Which we, uh, but which we, have, we have forgotten to. Okay, it happens to all of us. Yeah. We, um, and like you said, Holly, earlier, these will grow slower. They won't grow to the desired size that you thought it should if it was in full sun, but you're going to get production off of it and definitely water. And, and the watering is going to be different than the full sun garden because these are going to be in partial shade. The water, the, the ground's not going to evaporate as, uh, uh, the moisture as quickly. Right. And we had a question when we were, I think we were in Brookfield. They had asked, they said they have, their backyard faces west, so they don't get, much morning sun, but they get that super hot, strong, western summer sun. And they wanted to make sure that that was enough to grow tomatoes. Yes. And yeah. now my sister has the same type of yard where she gets, you know, she's 
her front front of her house faces east, back of the house faces west, and she has she gets phenomenal tomatoes. So that's definitely something. Just because you don't have like a south yard or you know a specific area, you still can get full sun based on where you are. Right. Well, and well, and with the partial shade, and we're up against the break here. With the partial shade, you want to be aware of it because it's it's a more damp and uh, area and slugs and other insects like it because it's not got that heat that the summer uh, sun provides because that's in that partial shade uh, location. Right, definitely. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about a number of ways that you can prevent yourself from getting burnt out. A lot of people jump on the garden early, and then by July, they could give a rat's patootie because, uh, of it because it's all weeds and they don't care anymore. We're going to help prevent that burnout right after this. For more gardening information, visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. But wait, 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 until after the show, we still have more garden information to talk about. An Oya is an unglazed porous clay pot with a short neck and a wider belly. Bury your Oya neck deep in your raised bed, container, or ground garden and let the Oya do your watering by releasing water as needed. How? By soil moisture tension for all you techies out there. This is an eco-friendly, efficient, ancient way to water your plants using up to 70% less water than other irrigation methods. It saves you time and is easy to install. Find a retailer through DrippingSpringsOils.com. Smart watering, easy gardening. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. I support by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit Bobex.com. B O B B. EX.com. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems raised garden bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and Plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG125 to save $125 and get free shipping. A $250 value on the purchase of an Eco Garden original garden unit available only in stone color. Purchases must be made to the website EcoGardenSystems.com forward slash store. Offer valid through December 31st, 2018, available to the contiguous United States. Rebel Green, responsibly made natural products that are good for you and the environment. Made in the USA, plant-based, vegan, and always toxic-free. Find out more at rebelgreen.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Ladybugs, information you may not know about them. This garden fun fact is sponsored by ManureTea.com. Get your three-pack today. Drop the tea bag in water, let it steep, then feed your soil, not your plants. 100% organic. Find out more at ManureTea.com. Always free shipping. There are about 4,300 kinds of ladybugs in the world, with around 400 different types living in North America. The female ladybug is larger than the male, and the ladybug's bright colors warn birds that they do not taste good. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh fruits, carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Hi, I'm John Lee Wendowski, retail manager of Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. Now, I'm not going to tell you about our awesome dome-grown plants, our beautiful pottery, or our 40 varieties of landscape materials. What I am going to tell you is that Blue Mel's is a local, independent, family-owned garden center that truly cares about your garden or landscape project. 
So if you're looking for that one garden center that actually cares about you, come to Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. We've been treating our customers like family since 1955. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is brought to you by the following. Candy Safety Knife, BioSafe, Tall Earth, Chapin International, The Plant Booster, Ivy Organics, Woodman's Market, Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the program, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. On the phone is... Holly Baird. There you go. Uh, we're going to talk about a number of things here in which uh, a lot of people struggle with each year, and, and Holly and I see this on a regular basis, that everybody's gun hole in, in early in the spring. They run to the garden center, and it's, it's getting warm. They go buy a bunch of potting soil and seeds and plant starts and all this thing, all this stuff, and they put it in the ground, and then by July, it, the weeds look like a field that's ready to be mowed down for hay for cattle, and it just, they, they lose interest because of a variety of factors, and we're going to go over some of these to prevent you from having this occur to you, because obviously there's some interest if you're going to the garden center, investing your hard-earned dollars to buy the merchandise to, to help you plant and help you put a garden together. We want you to succeed. We want you to get a reward out of it, whether it's a container garden or a backyard 40 or just a, uh, a couple of, you know, this, that, or another. So Right, def- definitely. And I think um, the first one here, we talk about this a lot because people say, um, and we've even had guests say this, you know, uh, what's a mistake people make, how do you prevent burnout, and it's starting too big. Um, you may be a new gardener, you may have a friend who gardens or know somebody like us, and you're like, well, my neighbor does this, and he's got this huge plot, and blah, 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 but I've never gardened in my life. Don't start like how your neighbor has it. You know, we all start somewhere. Start with, with what you can control. And, and, really and another thing that goes along with that, Holly, is lack of knowledge. Anything that mm-hmm. we do... Whatever your hobby is, bowling, car collecting, whatever, there's a certain amount of knowledge you have to know going into that activity in order for you to have some reward, some success, some, you know, be able to, to deal with the, the, you know, if you're going to bowl, you kind of got to know how the, how to, to stand and the kind of ball to use and those type of things. Car collecting, you now need, you need to know the value of the car and if it's worth it, the, the return on investment. Same thing with gardening. You need to know what the best tomatoes to grow are, how to plant them, soil structure, those type of things. Right, definitely. So, yeah, and then I think um, one that is not listed here is um, that we had written down, I thought of, was if, you know, when you start small, be realistic, be realistic about what you want to grow. Maybe start with, like, a few tomato plants, a cucumber plant, and some herbs. You know, think about what you want to try, and then as you get, as you work up some skills, then add some things in. Right, and, and you know, keep, keep it small. Uh, be realistic, and you got to prepare the soil. Ninety percent of your garden should be soil preparation, and ten percent should be the planting and harvesting of that mm-hmm. in which you planted. Containers, raised beds are a little easier because you are adding good organic material. Uh, a mixture, potting mixes, or compost. The, the ground garden, you're going to have to have a little more. I'll work to go into it to get it prepped to the point in which it will be, to some level, sustainable. Uh, but you've mm-hmm. got to get that initial structure built. Right. And this is one that um, we just talked about with the light requirement, so that's something you want to think about. Um, and then, obviously, keeping track of your water. But then the soil. We always talk about the soil. Um, it's important to, if you're, like, frustrated, why isn't this plant growing, why am I having so many issues, and as Joey had learned, he was trying to feed the plant, not the soil. Right. And until you understand that, you can end up being frustrated, feel burnt out, and just say, you know, to heck with this. Uh, also, over over or under fertilizing. Just because the packet of fertilizer says apply one quarter cup at, the, at each planting hole, that doesn't mean, well, if I give it a half a cup, that will mean it will be twice as better. 
or twice mm-hmm. as good. That's not the case. Fertilizers are derived from minerals which are salt-based. By adding too much salt to the roots, you're actually causing the roots of the plant uh, to absorb that salt and actually dehydrate the plant internally from the roots. And then that's just going to be worse and worse when you continue to add because you think, oh, it's not getting enough fertilizer. Over-fertilization actually has some symptoms if you do it too much, of under-fertilization. So then you continue to add more and more and more, and it goes downhill very, very quickly. Right. And too much nitrogen right. makes the thing super green, but you don't get no production of fruit. Yep, that's exactly correct. You don't want, you definitely don't want that. Um, let's see here, over-mulching. Um, well, mulch, mulch is a good thing, but using over-mulching or using the wrong kind of mulch can be problematic. So like, um, using something like wood chips, unless you're, um, you know, in your, in your edible garden, that can rob the soil of nitrogen and become problematic. So you want to make sure you're using good mulch. Um, and uh, that, that's right. Um, you want to, to be aware of these things and, and just basically start simple, understand your soil, uh, be realistic with what you have going on, and then you should be able to be more successful at producing what you want to grow. And we're always available at twvgshow at gmail.com to always answer any of your questions. And, well, Holly, we appreciate you jumping on for the first half of the program. When we come back, Mary Shire will be with us. She's author of Apples to Zinnias, Northern Gardeners. Uh, She's out of Minnesota. She's going to help us with some of our cool weather temperatures and growing successful plants right after this. Twenty four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. I know you're looking for an alternative to harsh chemicals, but you want professional strength products. BioSafe Garden Line gives you just that. Professionally used for 20 years, available to homeowners. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products from plant food, fertilizer, to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. BioSafe products can be used around children, pets, wildlife, so you can enjoy your yard more. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Find us on Facebook at BioSafe home and garden and visit us at biosafe.net to learn more get 10 percent off your next purchase at biosafe.net by using coupon code twvg at checkout the number one key to healthy productive plants are the roots starting from seed to full-grown plants rootmaker.com has the answer from seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots creating a fabulous root system Never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. Rootmaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit Rootmaker.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. The Gardener's Hollow Leg, the debris and harvesting bag you wear, comes with its own belt attachment, perfect for doing light pruning, weeding, harvesting on the ground or on a ladder, and many other uses. Find out more at TheGardener'sHollowLeg.com. Save 10% by using the word veggies at checkout. Tall Earth Wood Treatment All-in-One Preservative and Stain offers lifetime protection and creates a unique silver aged wood finish. All ingredients are non-toxic, eco-friendly, perfect for garden beds and veg trunks. Find out more at TallEarth.com. Free shipping on all orders. Use coupon code W-I-S-C-O-N-V-E-G to save 15% off orders placed at TallEarth.com. Keep your garden growing and your grass green with a Chapin G362D Professional Hose and Sprayer. Easily fertilize your lawn and garden and control pests. Just fill the tank with solution, select a mixing ratio, attach a garden hose, and spray. One 32-ounce tank will spray up to 362 gallons of diluted concentrate. Find online or order through Lowe's Home Depot. 
do it best hardware. See the full line of Chapin products at www.chapinmfg.com. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from Plant Success Organics.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination ability and healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponic root cutting, seed sprouting, cocoa core, and soil. Plant Success Organics.com carries powder, granule, and tablet form of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil to give your plant the optimal opportunity to produce incredible harvest. For more information and to purchase, visit PlantSuccessOrganics.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Haas Tools, Tree Diaper, Root Maker, Seeding Square, Rebel Green, Dripping Springs Oil, Zaz Products, Shield and Seal, Pomona Universal Pectin. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host, Joey Halle Berry. When it comes to gardening centers, none of them are created equal, and we're very fortunate enough here in the city of Milwaukee to have Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center available to us in a very short drive. Uh, they have over 40 different types of landscape materials to use, compost, sand, rock, mulch, as well as multiple bagged types of potting mixes and soil. And shortly they will be bringing in a number of native as well as vegetable plants, flowers, herbs, and even some tropicals that you can go <clears throat> and purchase. Uh, Blue Mel's Garden Landscape Center is the place for all of that. They've been around since 1955. They've been playing in the dirt. They're family-owned and operated, and the owner of the business actually works in the building. How many times can you say that for most of these multi-big uh, corporations? Uh, you can find Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield, and they can supply and surpass all of your garden needs. Blue Mel's. Uh, at bluemails.com and you can call them at any time at 414-282-4220. Well, we're going to go to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our next guest. Mary Shire is a freelance writer and editor of Northern Garden Magazine. She edits the only magazine devoted exclusively to cold climate gardeners. She is an author of From Apples to Zinnias, Northern Gardeners. Uh, Northern Gardener, welcome Mary to the program. Yes, thank you. I uh, really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to share some of your cold climate gardening tips with all of us here in Milwaukee. Well, I'm glad to do that. Uh, as it, it seems, we are having a hard time getting into gardening this year. It just seems like we are get a week of warm and then we get snow and freezing temperatures. How long is too long before us gardeners really should start getting concerned? Well, I think we're not quite there, but we're getting there. Um, it was 10, uh, 10 degrees this morning when I woke up here in Minneapolis. Um, not sure how cold you guys were, but it's been cold. And I still have a lot of snow on my yard. Um, so I think what you're looking at is um, maybe just starting a few more things inside, maybe adjusting what you plant, um, considering some ways to sort of extend the season with greenhouses or whatnot. But I think the long-term forecast, at least for my area, calls for it to be pretty cold through April 20th. Okay. Now, back in the olden days, you know, that really wasn't unusual, but it's, but it's, it's getting there. It's a, it's a cold spring. Well, and that's the thing. We, we, and you've probably faced this as well by starting seeds indoors. Okay, I'm just going to start some. Okay, well, I, I can plant a few more, and then be, you become overwhelmed, and it's kind of like a little jungle in the house. Uh, and you're like, i got to get these out, but it's too cold, and I've got to baby these things for another week. So it's a fine line, I guess, for, for gardeners who are, are especially new to, to starting seeds indoors. Right, and actually there may be some plants you just want to say, well, this year I'm, I'm not going to grow broccoli. Right. You know, or some other kind of a, a cold season plants that will, um, you know, go to seed quickly. They'll bolt. It just maybe this isn't the year to grow those and you grow something different instead. The only advantage to something like those cool weather crops is you can plant it out and plant them in the fall instead of right. the spring. So you right. can actually still get them. Right, you can start them in August or in, and still give, get a pretty good harvest. So we're talking about that, how is the best way for us northern gardeners to grow undercover and to the hobbyist gardener, 
Uh, is it worth the work in order to create a small load tunnel to protect your vegetation to get a jump start on the season or extend it into the fall? Well, a lot depends on what your setup is. You know, I have raised beds. I have a small urban garden now, and so I have raised beds. It's pretty easy to attach sort of a structure to those beds, like a cattle panel, or I've seen people use PVC pipe and all sorts of things to create a structure and then throw some plastic over it. It's not super expensive. It's pretty easy to do. So that kind of thing, you know, is not that hard. Um, and I think it's something people could consider doing. There's a lot of videos on how to do it. I know you've got some videos on how to do sort of simple uh, structures for putting plants under cover. Um, so, but a full-scale, you know, hoop house or greenhouse, that's a big commitment. Um, and I recently wrote a story about a woman who did a DIY greenhouse in Egan. She used a kit, and then she um, made it even better by adding a foundation and some, some interior structure. She gets a ton of plants, but she has a little heater in there, and she has to watch that thing quite closely. So, you know, do you want to make that commitment? That's a question you kind of have to answer. Kind of like having a, another child uh, in sense. Yes, it, well, it, at least for a few, you know, for a couple of months. Right. <laughs> well, it's not the full 18 years. <laughs> when you talk about the plastic that goes on it, what type of plastic are we talking about so people can you know, know what we're it, it, describing here? Yeah, I mean, what do you, it is, is it 6 mil? Is that kind of what you use? That is what we have used yeah. is a 6 mil. Now, the it's 6 not, mil, it's not that's usually plastic. what I use. Yeah, it's not see-through plastic. It's got a kind of milky film to it. Right. But it'll keep things pretty warm. Yes. And um, if you've ever read the books by Elliot Coleman in Four Season Gardening, he says every layer you can put on a plant, you're getting an extra zone. Right. So let's say you do that, and then you're going to have a cold night. So you've got your little greenhouse. Throw a layer of remay or some other kind of covering just on top of the plants. You might get another zone's worth of warmth, which is like 10 degrees. And it makes a big difference when those temperatures are borderline. Yes, it can make a huge difference. So let's talk about deadheading. There's a lot of people listening to the program that, that have a lot of flowers, mm -hmm. uh, perennials as well as annuals. Are, what, what is, why is it important for people to deadhead their flowers? And when it comes to dividing some flowers, uh, how do you know if, one, it can be divided, and, two, when you should divide it? Yeah. Well, there's two reasons to deadhead. The first is aesthetic. You know, I'm an editor, and I know that sometimes when you take things out, it's better. So if you get rid of those old blooms, it looks better. The second thing is for not preventing the perennial from setting seed, and that's, you know, that's the job of a plant, to set seed. So if you cut those, you know, if you deadhead it, it'll keep on blooming to try to do its job. Um, as far as dividing, um, not everything needs to be divided, but I use the sort of the donut system. <laughs> so with hosta, and they'll really show you their donut. The, the, the plant grows from the inside out, and so, you know, after a few years, you've got a hole in the middle, and then there's the donut of the plant around it. And so you can really see that in kind of early to mid-spring, and that's the good time for dividing. There you go. Uh, now, I, I saw this, and I wanted to ask you, you know, we all deal with weeds if you're not mm -hmm. growing potentially in containers or raised beds where you're supposedly bringing good material that does not contain weed seeds. Why is it important for us gardeners to understand and know what type of weeds we're removing rather than just digging them up and getting them out of our garden? Well, it's just a question of, you know, is the weed going to cause you a problem? And you said so you really should know what you've got. And some weeds are not that much of a problem or, you, or they're not a problem for you. Um, other weeds are, you know, very destructive. And, and so you know what, you know what you want and you want to know whether to remove it. And, of course, if you've got a perennial garden, sometimes people think it's a weed and it's not. It's a plant. You know, it's something they planted. And, and there's a plant called a stinging metal that if you grab it, it will hurt you. Right. So you well, and I, yeah, I used to grow, I used to have a garden that was near a wild area run by our city. We had... Wild parsnip in that wild area. You touch wild parsnip and you're going to get a terrible rash. And um, I learned that the hard way. So, you, you know, you also know, need to know what to not deal with and what to just cut off the top of the seed so it won't seed or do some other treatments to, to deal with the weed. Right. 
Uh, for those who do like to have a garden but also likes to have a, a nice lawn, what are some tips that you can provide to get a better lawn uh, to, to make it but more, more, more on the organic side rather than having certain companies come in and spray toxics mm-hmm. all over the lawn? What are some ways that we can manicure our lawn but do it in a way that our children and our neighbors and our family can play on it without us feeling bad about it? Yeah. Well, for right now, just stay off of it. I mean, stay off of it until it gets firmed up. That's one of the best things you can do with your lawn. Um, you have to kind of understand what grass is. It's a cool season crop, so it grows a lot in the spring, not much in the summer, and then a, more in the fall. And I guess, you know, when I see these services out in the middle of the summer, I'm like, what are you doing? Because just leave the grass alone is a good idea. Um, let it grow a little longer. Uh, two and a half inches is what I leave our lawn at. We don't have a lot of lawn, but we have some. Um, two and a half inches is a good height, and then mow it so that you can have the clippings go into the lawn and you don't have to gather them up. You know, if you want to do an organic weed and feed, I have tried this thing called corn gluten meal. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever tried that. That will be a, a project that will be coming up very shortly for us. Yeah, and I did it when my kids were little, and i got to tell you, it works. And it also brought in a lot of frogs. <laughs> so so it, I was surprised. I, I didn't expect it would work as well as it did. So that's an organic option. It's a little pricey, so it's great, but it's great on a smaller lawn. And I tell people, and, and you've done this too, we've drove down through neighborhoods after that application of that chemical spray has been a, a, a sprayed, and it burns our lungs. And I, I have to think, to, does common sense not fall into category of going, it burns my lungs. I'm putting on my lawn. I'm letting my kids play on it. Something doesn't add up. There's too many red flags here. Right, right. You know, and even if you go to the university websites like the University of Minnesota, which is the one I'm more familiar with, and I'm sure Wisconsin's the same, they'll tell you, you know, you only need to do a weed and feed in the spring, maybe, if you want to do that, and then maybe a fertilizer in the fall. You don't need to be doing it six or seven times a year. Right. Over-fertilization only tears up the water systems, uh, the runoff, and then we have dead zones in uh, rivers and lakes. Right. Uh, if you could, if you were only able, and, and this question, if you're only able to grow two perennial fruit-bearing plants in your northern garden, uh, what two would they be? Well, if if I did not have a problem with the spotted wing Drosophila, I hope I said that right, Drosophila, um, I'd grow raspberries. I think for the value you get for the amount of effort, there is nothing better than raspberries. Now, we do have this new pest called the spotted wing Drosophila, and if you've got that in your garden, you probably should grow strawberries. <laughs> Uh, my second one would be um, a cherry tree. I love this tree called the Bally Cherry or Evans Cherry sometimes. It grows really well in a northern garden. It's a de- wonderful looking tree. It's flowers. It's got interesting bark. I never sprayed that tree, and I got tons of cherries off of it. It's, it's a great tree. Uh, go back to the problem with the raspberries. What is the symptoms? What are you seeing and, and so we can inform all the listeners of what we might need to be aware of? Well, the raspberry will look a little soft when you pick it, and it will have a little worm in it. Oh, That's I had pretty question, distinctive. <laughs> I, I had this question uh, on Wednesday night, and I said, I, I will get you the right answer, so now I can do more research. And, and is there a cure or, or, or a application in which you can get these to remove? Unfortunately, you know, you can try covering them. Okay. They, they, it's a fly. Okay. It's a fly, and it starts out as a little, the larva is a little worm. Mm. Um, and, you know, right now I've, I've been following it through the University of Minnesota, um, and actually I participated in a testing program that they had where they had gardeners putting a, you know, a little thing in their yard to see if we caught any. And they are showing up here. I hope, I hope your listeners don't have that problem. Because raspberries are wonderful, and it's it's kind of a, a difficult pest to deal with. Well, it's good information to know. Uh, Mary, how can we find your book and find out more about you? Well, the book was published by the Minnesota Historical Society. It's a combination of how-to and history of gardening. It's available in most bookstores. That, um, Bards and Nobles carries it. Also, it's available online. Um, in all the usual places you get books, you can find it. A few nurseries in Minnesota are carrying it. Um, I don't know about Wisconsin, but I, maybe they are. It's a good book. <laughs> yes, it is. Absolutely. It's a very detailed instructional book. It's got a lot of information, a lot of great pictures to describe what, what you're speaking about uh, mm-hmm. in it. 
Yeah. Well, Mary, we greatly appreciate your time and the knowledge you shared with all of us uh, so we can better our northern gardeners. Yeah, well, thank you, Joey. Uh, and right, we'll be right back after this with your garden questions and our garden answers. If you have a gardening question, now is the time to call in on the IVOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline at 414-444-5250. Wouldn't you love to get more from your growing space? By utilizing the square foot garden method and properly spacing your plants, Seeding Square will optimize and organize your veggie garden to grow more greens and less weeds. The square foot color-coded seed spacer is a great tool for any garden, ground, container, or raised bed, and all experience levels, even little green thumbs. For more information, visit SeedingSquare.com. Seeding Square is gardening made simple. Are you short on time when it comes to grocery shopping? Yes, I'm talking to you. ShopWoodmans.com offers online shopping for store pickup or delivery on their over 60,000 plus items at Woodman's Everyday Low Prices. Or online, select a pickup or delivery time and create more time to do what you want. Leave the work to Woodman's. Also, check out the ShopWoodmans.com app. You can even make specialist requests like specific sizes of produce. For more information, visit shopwoodmans.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com. Com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Zaz Products, offering great quality supplements that can help personal health and increase longevity. Committed to bringing you the highest quality products at the lowest price. Find out more at ZazProducts.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products. Unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at Shield. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www. At outpost.coop. I want a garden center that listens to and understands my needs. I want to buy my gardening products from a local business with strong ties to the community. All I want is a garden center that truly values their customers. It seems like everyone is selling plants these days, but I'm having a hard time finding quality. I take pride in my garden, so I want my garden center to take pride in their products. Where will you be going for all of your gardening needs this season? Blue Mel's Garden Center. We are your answer. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Flame Engineering, Eco Garden Systems, Bob X, Plant Success, Beans and Barley, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Assassin, Manure Tea, the Gardener's Hollow Leg. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. So glad that you've joined us on this Saturday morning here in Milwaukee and wherever else you may be listening to on replay and video around the world. Well, if you have a question, you're more than welcome to call into the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Uh, Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard is a naturally pro- naturally protects your plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects new- newly installed plants and trees, shields, prune damages, uh, pruned and damaged surfaces for all your roses, fruit, nu- nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic and environmentally safe and organic. To find out more, visit ivorganics.com. Again, very easy to apply as well. We had a number of questions come in via social media, email, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram this week, and we'll cover some of these here. Uh, Brandon asked, I saw in your video you planted snapdragons 
uh, where your tomatoes, uh, in amongst your tomatoes. This was a, a video a couple of years ago. Uh, the question is, really? And yes, we do plant snapdragons. Uh, they are a short-lived, uh, tender perennial plant in Wisconsin. They're gonna die back, and they most times will not come back, uh, after the cold winter. Uh, often it, it can be grown just as an annual. And if they do survive through the winter, we can um, move them to a different location. But uh, they're very beautiful when blooming, and uh, very often they will not survive year to year. Pat asked, uh, please advise me on what fertilizer you use in your gardens. Well, we use a Sustain Natural, uh, Sustain.com. It's an all-natural fertilizer out of Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. It's OMRI listed, which means it's completely organic by the United States Department of Agriculture. It is derived from turkey litter and pine bark. The advantage of this is it's not, uh, it's not mined. They're not digging using big equipment. To dig, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet in the soil, uh, in the ground and digging up rock phosphate and destroying the ecosystem that way. <clears throat> it is designed to hold moisture and build soil structure and, and we've used it for three years and have seen phenomenal results. Uh, Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Centers, uh, Landscape Center does sell the Sustain Fertilizer. Uh, so that is available here in the Milwaukee area. And you can go to Sustain.com to find other locations throughout North America and the world where you can get it for your garden. Um, Another question, I want to plant flowers this spring using your new sponsor's product, Kellogg Garden Organic Natural Premium uh, Potting Mix. Uh, do I need to mix this with anything, or can I just plant it straight in the container? Well, the, you don't have to. Uh, uh, it, the all-natural potting mix is ready to use. Put it in the container and plant, and you don't have to worry about it at all. It's, it's just a ready to use. No soil. Um, it, it's not necessary to mix it with anything. Let's see here. What else do we have? Um, here, here's one. Um, I want to. I've been trying to grow sweet potato slips. Now, this is the procedure in which you take a sweet potato and, and uh, put toothpicks in a mason jar and let part of the bottom third of the potato tuber uh, submerge in water. It will develop roots and then it will begin to develop sprouts, which are the slips. If you purchase these from the garden center, they can be quite expensive. Uh, the question is, I've been. Um, Trying to grow them in a jar for three weeks and haven't got any slips yet to start. Do you think uh, the temperatures are too cold near my window? It's approximately 58 degrees at night uh, near the window in the house. And uh, that is, yes, that is a big concern. Sweet potatoes are a warm weather tuber. They have no relation to the actual regular potato that we're familiar with. Um, you really need temperatures between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit to get those uh, to germinate. Uh, those sprouts just and, and uh, to to start sprouting, and you need about three months of time period of that warm temperature to get those sprouts to develop. So if you're in a kitchen, a warm area next to a south facing window, uh, you want to keep the water to it. The roots will start developing. Uh, you can go on online and, and search how to sprout a sweet potato for slips. Some people will cut that bottom a uh, little piece off the bottom so the water can absorb into the actual tuber better, and others will just allow it to root naturally. Um, real quickly here, Joe from Milwaukee asks, what is the best time to start tomatoes and cucumbers from seed indoors? Well, tomatoes you can start right now. You want to start about eight weeks before your last average frost date, but we're still in a safe window being as cold as it is, uh, and, and put them, uh, get them started. Uh, you, Holly's, uh, grew up just planting the seed actually in the ground on Memorial Day weekend. They never started any seeds indoors. Uh, cucumbers, please do not start these indoors. They are a very fast, fast growing plant, and they're going to take over very quickly. If you, take a cucumber seed and start it indoors two weeks before you intend to plant one outdoors, and then you take that transplant and put it outdoors at the same time you start the seed outdoors, in four weeks they're going to be the same size. So it's just easier to just start them outdoors at the appropriate time uh, when the temperatures are reliably 70 degrees or higher. Uh, we typically plant them the last week in, uh, we typically plant them the last week in uh, May. Well, uh, we can go with more questions here. We'll continue with the questions here. We get this question a lot when we go to Garden Talks and online, just like we have here. Are my seeds still good from last year and the last couple of years? Well, the question of that is, to a certain degree, seeds lose viability about 
each year that you are holding them or not using them. Based on the type of seed will determine the longevity of life and the way you store it. Ideally, storing it in the crisper of your fridge. In the bottom, uh, in a canning jar, label it. It will keep for a, many years. Uh, tomatoes, will, you know, if kept in that environment, will last uh, 8 to 10 years. Parsnips, onions, leeks, carrots, you're looking at one, maybe two years if you're very fortunate. A couple of years ago, we uh, saved some parsnip seeds. The book or the internet or whatever you want to find uh, the reliable sources say about one year is all that seed's good for. Three years later, we planted that uh, seed or seeds there, and I planted them extremely heavy. And we had a tremendous crop. I had to thin out dozens upon dozens of seeds. So don't always go by what it says, but also if you think the seeds are not that good uh, because they've been uh, held for several years, uh, overplant on that. Uh, Donna asks, um, I have a relatively steep incline in my yard. I've tried planting black eye Susans, purple coneflowers, and lilias there. Uh, they fall over and the weeds come up. My next thought is to optimize this slope, planting plants that would produce vegetables, something that uh, would grow low to the ground and thick to drown out a lot of those weeds, uh, yet be useful. Can you make any suggestions? I was thinking a viney crop like squash, but I think uh, when it's mature, they would potentially roll down the slope, and uh, my slope is west-facing. Great question. We uh, always like to see your utilization of areas uh, to be more productive for food. It's a west-facing uh, slope, so that's good. It's going to get a lot of afternoon, evening sun. I would recommend a watermelon, a, a pumpkin, a butternut, spaghetti squash, something of that nature because they're going to have very large leaves, and they're not going to roll down the hill. The only time they would roll down the hill is if they were uh, assisted by an animal, but they're, they're going to be attached to the vine, so they're going to be perfectly fine there, and plant them densely. Uh, and you'll be fine. Uh, utilize that space for something more productive. Uh, here's another one. Can you tell me if I can grow seeds that I have found in fruits or vegetables that have been cooked already or baked? And the answer to that is no. Those seeds are already non-viable because of the heat that they have gone through uh, in the cooking process. Even when you dehydrate, when you people will take a dehydrator and dry those seeds out that they save from their tomatoes or eggplants or uh, onions or whatever the case is, those that is not a really recommended method because if the heat is too intense on the seed, it will bake the internal portions of that seed and make it non-viable when it comes to trying to plant it in the ground. Uh, Marco, uh, Marcus would like to know, uh, it's been very cold here in the Milwaukee area of late. I want, uh, if I was to cover a raised bed with plastic in a, a, a low tunnel or hoop type of situation, uh, how early can I plant tomatoes and peppers and other warm, loving plants such as that? Well, uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, for those who are listening in the Milwaukee area and watching in the Milwaukee area, uh, it, it was warm a couple of weeks ago, and then it's been very cold the last couple of uh, days to a week. If you cover the ground, that that's going to warm that soil. It's going to act as if you put a greenhouse over top of that grow bed or that raised berm or that spot of garden that you have there. Uh, it's, it's a really hit and miss because... Typically, we plant our warm weather crops, the tomatoes, the peppers, about the second to third week in May, around the Memorial Day holiday. If you warm that soil earlier, you might be able to plant late April uh, based on the, the conditions. But the disadvantage or the warning I will put out to you on that is if you do not vent that load tunnel, that sheet of plastic that's closed on both ends, that mini greenhouse properly, those seedlings in which you put in when the soil is warm enough will bake because it may be 60 degrees outside or 55 degrees outside, but it may be 90 to 110 degrees in that low tunnel if not vented correctly. Well, that's all the time we have today. Uh, miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can find that under the radio tab at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Looking for a specific interview or uh, topic, you can find that under the highlight tab on the right-hand side of the main page.
programming note, join us next week when we're going to discuss 12 tips on how to save more time in the garden but still get out what you're putting into it, the, the reward of the harvest, as well as how much per plant or how many plants should you grow in order to get enough to sustain yourself for the whole year based on the size of your family, as well as Southern Gardener, Greg Key will be with us to discuss some of the techniques that he uses that we here in the north can use to grow some of those warm weather crops. For Holly Barron, I'm Joy Barron, and until next week, we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Tell a friend and join Joy and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.